Hello and welcome to my review of Hot Wheels Unleashed. All the gameplay in this video was captured on a PlayStation 5 console, but the game's also available for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Xbox Series consoles, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Remember, if you enjoy this video or find it useful, please do consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. So, what is Hot Wheels Unleashed? Well, it's an arcade racing game based on the popular die-cast model cars produced by Mattel. There's actually been quite a few Hot Wheels games released over the years, and this one seems to be the first iteration to take a serious swing at delivering a high-quality title. The game has most of the features that you'd probably expect to see in an arcade racing game, and a few that you might not. You've got the standard stuff like a single-player campaign, online multiplayer, offline split-screen, and a section where you can admire your car collection. In addition to that, though, there's some extra features that a lot of racing games whether they be arcade or simulation, don't always offer. Firstly, there's a livery editor, which is essentially a skin designer for your cars. You can choose from a wide range of colors, and you can change the material types, you know, plastic, metal, enamel, that kind of thing, as well as applying stamps and decals. Once you've finished creating a design that you like, you can then upload it for other players to use, and of course, you can download thousands of other designs created by players from all across the world. The same is true of the included track editor mode, which has a huge range of tools and parts for you to create as many tracks as you want, pretty much infinitely. As I just mentioned, you can upload any tracks you create for other players to use, and download as many as you want from the community. There's also a basement feature that allows you to fully customize a Hot Wheels themed basement area, with items and patterns that you unlock from the single player campaign. The basement has four separate sections within it, and you can change virtually everything like the walls, floors, decorations, types of materials you used and color. Once you're happy with your basement design, you can then use it as a space for designing your own custom tracks. And when you share that track online, if another player downloads it, they will get the track that you created, and the basement they see around that track will be the one that you designed. The single player component of the game is called Hot Wheels City Rumble, and it's essentially a top down look at a town map with various interconnected nodes on it. These nodes represent different events. The events themselves can be one of four types races, time trials, boss races, or secrets. Races and time trials are exactly what they say they are, but boss races are generally longer, a bit more difficult, and have some sort of themed hazard to avoid, which is based on an actual Hot Wheels playset. The secret races are only unlocked after fulfilling a requirement. I won't be spoiling any in particular here, but they all boil down to simply completing certain races on the map with a specific car. That then unlocks the secret race, which can then be completed with any car you like. As you progress through the map and complete various events, you'll gain gold coins, gears, blind boxes, prize cars, and cosmetic items for your basement. It is important to note that all of this is acquired without any microtransactions at the time of recording, but of course, things can and sometimes do change. The gold coins that you acquire are used to purchase blind boxes or limited time offers from the shop, which is located on the main menu. Blind boxes are exactly the same as loot boxes, but without the ability to pay real money for them. You can collect free blind boxes from the first time you win specific races, but you can also buy them for 500 coins each. These boxes are completely random, and you'll be getting many duplicates in your pursuit of a full collection. The cars themselves come in a variety of rarities, as you may have guessed, and the rarer models are really not very easy to pull, which of course leads to the duplicates that I mentioned. So you have all these duplicates, what can you do with them? Well, you can break them down for gold coins or gears, and the amount you receive depends on the rarity of the car you broke down. The common cars will only get you 300 coins, which isn't quite enough for another blind box, but you could instead choose to receive gears. Gears are the currency that you use for upgrading your cars. Each vehicle has stats that affect its speed, braking power, acceleration, and handling. You can't actually choose a stat to specifically upgrade, but the game will auto-upgrade a car when you spend the required gears. I assume this was done in an attempt to balance the cars a bit for the online racing. You could, of course, skip the blind box stuff entirely and just save your coins for the limited time deals. These limited time deals give you a small selection of cars to buy from, which range from 500 coins up to 1200. The catch is that the cars on offer are actually on an in-game timer of four hours. So in reality, you'll need to actually play the game for four hours for the list to refresh. You could, of course, just keep the game running in the background while you go do something else, but it is worth noting. Moving into the multi player section. The online mode offers races for up to 12 players and allows players to vote on the next track. You'll also be rewarded with coins for placing well in the races, but there isn't really much else to do here besides simply race. In regards to the offline section, 
You have access to two-player split screen on the same console, but that's about it. There is actually a profile that you can set up for yourself that other players can see. You can set your favorite car, and it's got some customizable backgrounds, emblems, and tags which you can unlock through the single-player campaign. The Hot Wheels cars themselves are modeled in-game to represent the actual toys and not their real-life counterparts. Now, that might seem like an odd thing to say, because there's some very oddly designed Hot Wheels originals that have no real-life version. However, a lot of the older Hot Wheels games have tried to supersize the cars and sort of tried to create a realistic life-size racing game. This game focuses on trying to make the cars feel and look like the die-cast models they represent. I mean, the obvious giveaway is the fact that you're racing around tracks that are set up in huge rooms, but the more subtle differences are on the cars themselves. If, for example, a specific Hot Wheels car had some plastic mold lines or was made of both plastic and metal in certain parts, the developers have recreated that on every single vehicle for a close to photorealistic design. The cars even lose paint around their edges as you race, they get scratched up, and they start to show fingerprints and condensation. All this damage does reset at the end of each race though, so don't worry about it, it's not permanent. Luckily, for those artistic folks out there, you can make use of the game's fully featured photo mode to see all of this detail for yourself and take some great shots of your favorite cars in action. And so by this point, you should have a very good idea of what the game is and how it works. So let's move on to my personal opinion, starting with the positives. Please do remember that this isn't an exhaustive list by any means, and it's just a few things that stood out to me. And the same is true for the negative section. As some of you may already know, I picked up the Challenge Accepted edition of the game, which was exclusive to our game stores over here in the UK. They're basically our GameStop equivalent. That edition cost me £20 or about $25 more than the standard edition and came with the base game, a steelbook, a large poster, an official real-life Hot Wheels car with an exclusive livery, and the Volume 1 Pass. I got this version because I do casually collect Hot Wheels and I sometimes like to, you know, customise them and repaint them, things like that. You could say that I know the toys pretty well, and honestly, the level of detail that the developers were able to achieve is rather impressive. I actually own a couple of the cars that you can acquire in the game, and a few times I held them up to the screen just to see how accurate they really were, and they were literally identical. And, you know, I just really appreciate that kind of care and attention. Now, obviously, making a car look real in something like Gran Turismo 7 or Forza Horizon 5 is a whole different thing, not to mention a much more complex thing, but for what this game is, I just couldn't really ask for better in terms of visual quality and adherence to the source material. To me, the moment-to-moment -moment racing itself feels pretty great for the most part, but it is a double-edged sword, which I'll elaborate on in the negative section, but most of the time when I'm just speeding around the track, it's very enjoyable and has an awesome sense of speed. Each car has the ability to charge up and use boosts, and while some of the boosts work a bit differently depending on which car you use, they all do basically the same thing. I just really like the fact that the racing itself is very easy to pick up and play, but at the same time it's pretty difficult to get right consistently. Drifting around corners is really fun and rewarding when it's done correctly, but it takes quite a few hours to really get good at it. I mean, at least it did for me. The game plays in a way that allows kids and perhaps their parents to sit down and race side by side with no issues, but also allows more skilled players to really squeeze the best performance and track times out of the cars. Then when you add in the fact that the vehicles all handle differently and you can customize them, upgrade them and build an infinite amount of tracks, you've got a lot of stuff to work with and master. And so with that out of the way, let's talk about a few negatives. And the first thing I want to say here is that I like this game. I really, really do. I've been looking forward to it for quite a while, and I bought that special edition I mentioned earlier. The problem for me is that while it's a good game, it wasn't what I was personally hoping for in a couple of ways. So in the positive section, I said that the racing itself was a double-edged sword. Well, this is what I meant. The racing is fun and enjoyable for a good chunk of the time. When you're speeding around the track, hitting huge jumps, and drifting around corners, it's just really a lot of fun. As I did this, though, I found myself becoming more and more annoyed at certain aspects of it. So sometimes you'll be racing quickly down a certain section of track and you'll see a boost pad or something like that, right? And then very quickly after it, a super sharp turn will appear or a barrier or some other hazard to avoid and it's very, very hard not to hit these things when boosting. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I'm not exactly a pro when it comes to video games, racing games especially, and my reactions aren't quite as quick as they used to be when I was in my 20s, but it just always felt like they were intentionally in your way. And I know, I know, they're called hazards 
hazards for a reason, you're supposed to avoid them, I get it. But for me and my personal enjoyment, they just kind of got in the way of the speed and they just felt unnecessary. It felt a little bit at odds with itself, like the game wanted you to be speeding around the track but then put these barriers there to stop you. And while I did get better at the game over time and was avoiding them a bit better, you know, towards the end of my play, they still just felt like they were there to sort of piss you off, you know, more than actually be part of the game. It was just kind of annoying to always come across them. I'd rather just have a straight track with jumps and cool turns and drifts and things like that. But, you know, I mean, if it doesn't bother you very much and you've got the reactions of a gazelle or something, then this point is probably a big nothing to you. And that's absolutely fair enough. This is just how I felt about it. Another thing that's related to the racing aspect is that I just came off of playing Cruise and Blast, which I also reviewed. That game has really tight controls and the cars moved and handled very quickly. This may just be down to recently playing the other game, but all of the Hot Wheels cars felt very heavy on the track and even with the handling stat maxed out, I felt like I was controlling a hippo on a skateboard sometimes. I mean, I've played the game for probably 20-25 hours at this point and I had issues with the game's physics quite often. The game wants you to boost and drift and do all these jumps and little transitions and stuff, but unless you've really got the car perfectly straight, you can find your car just flying off the track or flipping over and it just gets frustrating after a while. It's not a constant thing, it's not like every few seconds or anything like that, but it did happen a considerable amount and I just ended up finding it annoying after a while. And then adding to my personal annoyance was the, in my opinion, overuse of the time trials events in the main campaign. I've never really liked time trials in racing games ever since the days of, you know, Super Nintendo or Mega Drive. Whenever I saw the words time trials on a main menu, I never went near them. I just ignored them for the most part. Now, I understand that some people really enjoy the challenge of beating the time set by the devs or whatever the case may be, but for me, nah, I've never been a fan of it. You'll actually notice here in the top right corner that I've won everything except for the time trials. Each race has two requirements for completion. For time trials, you have a somewhat easy time to beat and then a much harder one. I was only able to beat two out of the 32 of the harder ones, and believe me, that was not through lack of trying. I've tried every one of them multiple times and I just cannot do it. I'm even stuck on this last branch of the time trial nodes in the campaign, which you can see here. For whatever reason, I just cannot beat this green wave level. I'm always about 8 to 10 seconds away from completing it, and I've tried it perhaps, oh, I don't know, 20 times now. Although having said all that, this is just me. I'm obviously just not that good at the game, and that's fine. This is, of course, a negative for me, but it may actually be a positive for you. I mean, you may enjoy the challenge, so make of that what you will. And lastly in this section, I want to talk about the DLC for this game. So just to bring you up to speed, the standard edition of the game is around £35 here in the UK. Sometimes it's a bit more, sometimes it's a bit less. And that's around $47 in the US before taxes, so let's just say 50 bucks. The first of the three upcoming DLC packs, which frankly don't contain that much content, is £25, and that's probably around $35. It only includes, what, 10 cars, some track pieces, some customization stuff, and I think a small expansion to the campaign. I personally find that pretty unacceptable. For that kind of content, I would struggle to justify, what, £10 or $15, to be honest? Now, I actually got the Volume 1 Pass included in my Special Edition that I bought, and I guess when you consider the other stuff that's included in it, I would have actually paid considerably less for it than normal. However, at this point, I have not used the code because I, frankly, don't want it. After seeing how much they were trying to charge for the DLC, my attitude towards the game did shift a bit, and not entirely, but just a little bit. And what's worse, I have no proof of this, but considering how long it takes to develop a video game, I think this game was designed to have microtransaction in from the start, but it was taken out and changed to the more socially accepted DLC model. Perhaps I'm just cynical. Perhaps not. But you know, I've seen this industry change over my 25 years of gaming and I just find it very difficult to trust game companies these days. What's more is that this Volume 1 pass that costs nearly as much as the base game, by the way, was ready to go on sale day one, which means they literally made that content to be sold separately. Why wasn't it just in the game from the get-go and then six months down the line they could have just released something if the game did well? At the end of the day, it just amounts to greed and it's just really disappointing to see. In fact, I may just sell the special edition I bought. I just cannot and will not support this kind of stuff. I mean, if it was, say, £10 or $15, it would still be crappy, but £25? It's just frankly a joke. 
And so on that cheery note, let's move on to the conclusion and recommendation section. Despite the things I just said, I think Hot Wheels Unleashed is a perfectly fine and fun arcade racer with some very intricately modelled visuals and a host of creative options. Sadly, for me personally, it hasn't quite lived up to what I was hoping for, and the DLC stuff has really left me with a nasty aftertaste. Does that mean that the game's bad and not worth playing? No, I wouldn't go that far at all, and I also understand that while monetization is a sticking point for me, it isn't something that everyone cares about, so that particular point will vary person to person. If you're someone who's just into arcade races, I think this game is a pretty safe bet, and I would suggest just getting the base game and ignoring the extras if possible. Along those same lines, if you're a fan or collector of the actual Hot Wheels cars like me, then sure, I think you'll have a decent time with it, even if it's just to check out the in-game models and collect all of the available cars. And if you're a parent whose kids love Hot Wheels and you've embedded half of their collection into your feet over the years, this might be a less painful compromise. It's basic enough that if you don't personally play video games, you could still sit down with them and enjoy this together. Ultimately, I think it's a good, solid arcade racer that overall I enjoyed. It's not got everything I personally wanted in the right places, but the world doesn't revolve around me, and I understand that. If you were to ask my opinion on recently released arcade racers, I would tell you that I preferred playing Cruise and Blast over this. But it's not really a case of one is bad and one is good. They're both great, I just enjoyed one more than the other. And there you go, that's my review of Hot Wheels Unleashed. It's available right now for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series consoles, Nintendo Switch, and PC. If you have any questions about the game or you just have something to say, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, I hope today will be the day that I earn your subscription. And if you want to support the channel even further, all the important links are in the video description down below. But with all that said, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.